everybody, welcome back to my channel. In today's episode, I'm gonna be showing you um, the difference between making a pastel landscape with hard pastels versus soft pastels. So the two landscapes I'm going to be creating are very different from each other. Well, kind of different. They're mostly sky, but um, the blending is really the difference between a soft and a hard pastel. So they're two different landscapes and they're both done in real time. And as I go along, I will tell you some tips and talk about the texture and some of the pros and cons that I think um, are involved when you're talking about both hard pastels and soft pastels. So enjoy the video and if you have any questions, please um, uh, write them below because I'm always checking and um, thumbs up the video if you like more of these sort of videos and hmm, oh yes, yeah, subscribe to my channel. Thanks. Enjoy the video. So both of these paintings are going to be done on this paper. This is just black drawing paper. Now a lot of artists who use pastels hate drawing paper because there's not a lot of tooth in it. And I agree with that. There's not a ton of tooth, but I tend not to do too many layers, um, especially for this landscape drawing. I just kind of want to be one and done. Um, I want these to go very quickly. And so I'm not going to be adding a lot of detail. I'm going to use black paper. You'll be able to see um, the amount of pigment that rubs off on a hard pastel versus a soft pastel with this black very easily. Okay, so like I said, the first landscape we're going to do is in hard pastel. Now these are my hard pastels. These are new pastels. This is um, from Prismacolor and Prismacolor is very readily available here in the United States. 96 colors or 100 colors or something sounds like a lot of colors, but it's actually not. You'll realize that this is a very limited palette once you start getting into pastels because pastels don't mix like paint, so it's not like you can get away with having 10 colors and mix you know, every single color in the world. They don't really work like that. If you need a color, you need to buy that stick of pigment. Um, that's why pastel artists have like a bajillion sticks of pastels because you need that stick for every individual color you want, if that makes sense. So let's get started. Now I'm going to start with a blue sky here and this is a little bit of a dirty pastel. So that happens just because they're always bouncing off of each other. So just grab a cloth and wipe it down. And sure rolling here. Now I'm going to just go right across the page and as you can see there is a lot of black. Okay now I'm going to rub this in and see if the rubbing helps. It doesn't really. I can still see a lot of black through the page. You really need to get a good rub for these. Okay to fill in the tooth. That's why I wanted to use the um, black paper to really show you the type of coverage that these have. Now I'm rubbing and, you know, there's definitely some movement. I'm getting it all over the place, but compared to a soft pastel, you'll see that there's a big difference here. But, you know, there is definitely some movement and some blendability, okay? Um, so I need to go with a darker blue, but I don't have that many darker blues, okay? Because this set just doesn't have a lot of different varieties of colors. When you're talking about soft pastels, you can get every color in the world known to man, plus colors you didn't even know existed. And that's one of the huge benefits of the soft pastels, okay? So I'm just blending along here. Now, I just grabbed a reference photo from online. I'll be honest, I'm not really adhering to it too much. I'm just kind of having fun. I think the best part about pastels is that you can have fun. There's a lot of blending. Um, you can quickly turn a reference photo into your own thing um, very easily. So that's why I really like pastels. They're just fun. They're different. They're exciting. Every moment is a new adventure. Now, in the reference photo, it's a pretty pinkish orange, and there's like no pinkish orange in this set of Prismacolors. So that's a bummer. But I'll show you what it looks like if you wanted to like do some blending. So I'll make my own pinkish orange. So there's pink. 
and then hmm let's take a nice soft orange cleaning it off you usually always have to clean off your pastels sometimes I just take a night and just clean my pastels now you'll see that they don't really blend in they actually make kind of a muddy color um, so that's what I mean when I say that if you want a color, you need to buy that color. You're not going to be able to just blend it the, and mix it up the way you would with if you're used to like um, painting with acrylics or watercolors or oils or whatever. So huge disadvantage. Okay. Now it is fun to just kind of blend and see how things go. Um, there's definitely some, a lot of room for adventure in pastels. And I'm just blending, just soft blending. See, I just made a mark and I don't really love that color, so that's okay. I'll just blend it out with another color. No problem there. Now, this picture that I'm going with here has a lot of grays, and that's another thing. There are not a ton of gray tones in pastels. So. And, you know, I'm having a really hard time truthfully figuring out how to get the exact color clouds in my reference picture here because there's just, it's that much of a deficit on color choices. And even if I reached into my mungyos, I wouldn't find, you know, different grays the way I would. When you're talking with soft pastels, some companies just put out sets of gray. So, you know, this isn't looking as cohesive as I had kind of hoped, but that's okay. Now, because I'm using drawing paper as opposed to something like a pastel paper or pastel mat or a um, sanded paper, I'm not gonna get a lot of different um, a lot of options for layering. I'll just get, you know, two, three, maybe four layers if I stretch it, um, which I don't want to do. So we're just going with the flow here. And like I said, I'm like, I'm going to show you what this looks like again so i need like a gray like a bluish gray but i don't have that i've got a blue and i've got a gray and we'll see what happens when we blend them but you know that looks a little bit better for sure um, but again it would be more ideal to just have the color And I like to layer, like really blend in layers. And I'll use this pink just to make some soft lines. Now that looks like a hard, weird line. Rub it in. Still looks a little hard and weird. We're gonna make that go away. We're gonna really rub that out. Okay, and if you want, just go down, be a little artsy. Okay. Okay, so now this particular picture has some um, mountains. So one principle when it comes to uh, landscapes is that things that are far away are lighter in color and then as you move closer, it gets dark to, you know, the point closest to you is more of like a black. Okay, so I'm going to just 
blend this in a little bit more just because we have a lot of different colors here and that's okay I mean this is just a practice just to show you how these things kind of blend um, and how many layers you can get on generally I would stick with more of a cohesive color theme here but that's not the point of tonight And I just realized I was using this blue that I didn't really like, so. So there's definitely a lot of a lot more layering that you can do on drawing paper than some artists think. But it really just depends on the look you're going for. If you're going through for something blendy and kind of smoky and foggy, then you know, you can get away with drawing paper. If you want to do something very detailed, like a portrait or an animal or something like that, then I would definitely recommend that you just um, work on something with more tooth. But I do plenty of um, pet portraits and stuff, and I use drawing paper. But it's got to be really... Um, I would say it should definitely be quali very quality drawing paper. Okay. So as you can see, I just really changed that and did a lot of blending out. And I would say that's probably three layers or so. I don't want to push it though. Okay. So going back to that um, idea I told you about how farther things away are lighter in color. So there's several mountains here so I'm gonna have the ones that are the farthest away in this kind of bluish color and that looks like that color to me so now the thing about hard pastels is that you can take advantage of this um, edge and you can make really sharp lines and I'm just gonna go right in underneath here smooth it out I'm going to try to really just sharpen that line up at the top because when you're talking about mountains and stuff like that 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 is something with a sharp edge it's not going to be too misty now I left off something here so this has to be a little bit lighter and for that I'm actually going to try this purple that looks pretty good Like I said, we're going lightest to darkest in the front. And this purple one is farther behind. This is going to be more like an abstract, really. But again, I did this on small paper because I'm not really planning on doing anything with this, but just for your benefit out there on YouTube. Next, I am going to, again, go darker. I'll probably do one more layer darker before I put in, like, the black. Oh, okay, so there is a little bit of a mist here. I'm going to add that in. Okay, I'm going to add that in with some gray. And when you're doing a mist, you don't want it to be a sharp edge because mist isn't going to be sharp, right? It's going to be like smoky and foggy and very beautiful. And that's the other thing about pastels is that you can get these kind of smoky effects really easily. 
um, just by blending. So if you're just watching this now, this is um, hard pastels. I'm using Prismacolor New Pastels. And I'm just creating a little bit of a foggy mountain scene. Nothing crazy. Just playing around with colors so you can see kind of how they blend. All right, so now I'm going to go darker. And, you know, I've basically done away with the reference photo at this point. I'm just going off on my own thing. Reference photos are nice, but with pastels, sometimes it's fun to get carried away and end up just doing your own thing. And art should be your own anyways, especially this reference photo I just grabbed from online. I'm not planning on selling this piece or doing anything with it other than this demonstration. So um, this is a royalty-free photo though. I got it from Pixabay, I believe. And it's a very beautiful picture. But even when I do use reference photos, I try to change it up in some way. All right, and now finally, I'm gonna just bring it in, bring it home with the black, which won't be too hard because black is already here, right? Okay. So I'm gonna show you what else is gonna happen. So this is that. All right. And the fun part is just making these huge swatches and blending it. Now, I'm not done yet, even though it looks like I'm kind of on the done side. I'm going to add some trees. Now, some of you at home might be saying, that looks really dusty. Um, are you worried about this getting into your lungs and killing you early? Uh, maybe I should be, but no, I'm not. There are some people that use like dust protectors and stuff like that, but um, not me. Okay, so in the very foreground of my picture are like uh, just a bunch of... Um, like trees and so um, I will show you how I would do these with pastel or the hard pastels so first I would make the tree like this then I would just kind of use the um, shape this hard edged shape of the pastel to my advantage. And you don't wanna make anything perfect, right? Because nature is not perfect. Now I'm just kind of having some fun here. You can, you know, really add some add some different shapes in there. Okay, that one looks good. Now for the next one, I'm going to make the um, branches point up a little bit. I'm also going to make it thicker. There's not a lot of rhyme or reason here. It's actually best not to think. I'm just using this shape um, to my advantage. This is coming out really, this one's not coming out as well. But that's all right, because I'm going to add more. So 
but just let the pastels lead. All right, now I'm going to make a little bit of a lower one, give it some space, because in reality, trees aren't always super dense, so it's okay to give them some space. blend between trees, make some random pieces. Now I could go in, if I wanted to, with a pastel pencil and really make these um, really detailed. Okay, that would take a long time. And I'm happy to show something like that on another video if you wanna know, you know how to make more detailed trees. But this, I'm just, I'm just having fun. There's no rhyme or reason to this. Now I will, just for fun, I'm gonna take a pastel pencil and show you what that would look like if I layer pastel pencil over hard pastel. So I might be able to get a little bit more detail. This is actually a gray, which is fine. This gray tree would just denote that it's a little farther away than the other ones. And then again, I don't want to be too perfect. right now which seems kind of strange but I'll tell you why I don't have a black pastel pencil as you can see the pastel pencil does go over hard pastel pretty well however I tend to use charcoal and when I need to you know get in detail and that is because charcoal is generally softer than pastel and so it will most likely get on to the tooth over soft pastel or hard pastel more readily than you know some pastel pencils are so hard that you can't layer them over pastel once you know you filled up the tooth of the paper but whereas charcoal is so soft you usually don't run into that problem, but you will see that the charcoal is a lot um, lighter than pastel. So that's something just to keep in mind. It will just be based on your preference. I should have a, um, a black pastel pencil here. I'll, I'll pick one up at Blick probably this week, but um, I just don't, sorry. So again, I'm just gonna So remember, we're trying to do like a triangle shape. Not too perfect though. And I sometimes, if you notice the way I'm shaking my hand, I'm like just kind of shaking it like I can't really describe this motion but I just kind of tense my muscles together and bear down on the page and it tends to come out in this movement that's jagged and random and that usually helps when I'm trying to do something like this. All right I'm going to just add one last tree and the way it is in the reference picture here it kind of comes out from the side and you'll see I'm just jaggedly moving my hands. I don't know where I learned this trick from but I just started doing it um, many months ago when I was first starting pastel and 
it gives really good random movement. Sometimes some people are so, um, want to be so perfect that they forget to be imperfect, if that makes sense. Especially if you're a landscape artist, there's no perfectness in nature. It's the imperfections that make it beautiful. So, you know, try to remember that while you're drawing. So that's all I'm going to do for this one. Um, again, this is hard pastel. And, um, you know, you can definitely achieve some very nice results for a landscape with it. But next, I'm going to show you what it would look like if we had soft pastel. So I'm going to just rip this. Okay. Okay. So again, I'll give you one last look as I'm cleaning up my hard pastels. And I really like hard pastels. I think that their shape um, makes them really good at putting in these hard lines, which can come into handy when you're doing realism. A lot of my pet portraits and things are in, are more of that realistic style. And therefore, um, I prefer using hard pastels with those sort of things. But you'll see in a moment, the benefits of actually using soft pastel. So I'm going to take this and I'm going to put it away. Now you might be asking, do you fix your pastels? Yes, I do. Not a lot of artists like using a fixative. Um, I do, but it's my own personal preference. A lot of my art is getting shipped because I, um, have a lot of people buying it. And so when I ship my art or when I'm giving it to somebody like a commission, I want it to have a little bit of a coating because um, a lot of people don't realize you can't touch a pastel when it's done or it will smudge. And so this would help if they did accidentally touch it, it might not smudge as much. And this one is actually a UV protectant spray. So again, not everybody is careful with their art and they will just hang it up in direct sunlight and you'll get a call back in a few months saying your art is terrible. So avoid that mess. So finally, I am going to show you um, my soft pastel. And so this box is... Um, all soft pastels from a bunch of different brands. So I kind of just pick and choose colors I like. I also, one of the best things I did um, is I bought a, I think, I think it's 180 sticks of Blix brand of soft pastel. Um, I think they're really good. They're kind of like a Daler Rowney if you wanna have a comparison to something you might know. This was just a way for me to fill all the gaps and basically have every single color if I needed it. Um, they aren't my favorite because I do like Great American and I like, um, um, I think it's Jack Richeson. I'm, for the, I'm blinking out on the name right now, but I also like Schmincke and I love Sennelier as well. So those are kind of my favorites, but the Blick, you know, for, 300 and something dollars to have a full stick of every single one of Blix um, pastel line. I thought it was super worth it. Okay, so I'm going to put these down. And this landscape is actually more like this. Now, the first colors I'm going to use are very dark. Now watch this. I'll start with actually a lighter one so you can really see what's happening here. So this one, I'm pretty sure, is one of the Blick brands. I can just tell by the shape. So you can see this is a very vibrant color. And, you know, it definitely leaves some black. Um, you know, some, I can see some black left behind from the paper underneath, okay? But I'm gonna just smooth that in and you know, I can already feel the difference of how smooth this is. 
as opposed to the hard pastel. Let me go in with a different color here. See, that one pretty much took care of, you know, the rest of the black for the most part. I'm going to just, and the other thing is you'll see it spreads a lot farther than um, the soft, the hard pastel rather. This one I know is a Sennelier. So once you use your pastels a lot, you'll be able to identify the brand just by feeling how it behaves on the paper. It's almost like moms know their babies by their cries. A true pastel artist knows their pastel brands by the feel on the page. That's not really true, but it's kind of true. And actually, I have been using my watercolors and my oil paints more often lately, and I can still tell, you know, one brand from the other pretty well. Okay, so... Next, I am going to really darken this up. And this is like the darkest blue I have. Now, I'm gonna just fill the whole page with something else. This is a Sennelier. This is actually Sennelier number 504. And the only reason why I know that number by heart is because I run out of this color the most. I think it's so pretty. It's just like a perfect bluish green. And also now you'll really see how those, the two colors just blend into each other. Hard pastels don't blend into each other like that. And I just love the effect you can get by smudging. Some people don't like the way um, pastels feel on their hands totally understandable to each his own but I really get a lot of pleasure and satisfaction out of this because I just feel like you're really creating a really nice piece from doing just blending with your fingers so as you can see I have some really nice soft edges and now I'm going to come in with a hard not hard it's not hard at all it's soft this is a Sennelier as well and it actually has a little bit of glitter to it but I think that shimmer is from one of my shimmer um, sets I have some set shimmer soft pastels which I did a YouTube video on it was called the tasty sampler um, the metallics from the fine art store. So if you're interested in trying some metallics, then the fine art store has a really nice sampler. Okay, so I didn't go into the cloud. I just kind of did around. So I'll show you kind of how you can blend. I can make, you know, um, hard edges. I can make some soft edges because a cloud is made up of both hard and soft edges. So, you know, now, you know, where I didn't put any color, this is actually looking like it's giving the cloud more dimension. So, you know, and you can just have fun with it. I don't think I've ever made a bad landscape in soft pastel, but you can, you know, definitely tell that this soft pastel is behaving a lot more different, differently, a lot differently, a lot differenter. It's, you know, really nice and soft and the blend is beautiful compared to the hard pastel. So again, you know, I think it's beneficial to try them both, especially if you plan on doing different sort of art. So like I do landscapes, I also do, you know, pets and wild animals. And so, you know, I think it's beneficial for me to have them both kind of I use them both, you know, kind of equally. Now, I love this color. This was from the Tasty Sampler, the metallic. I want to say it's a schminky. I don't even remember, but look how gorgeous that is. I mean, and I'm like, I'm like making cartoony like clouds right now. You know, it looks almost like the clouds I made in fifth grade or something. Um, I'm going to wipe that off because I don't want 
but it wipes off really easily. So I'm gonna just blend that in too. Oh, that's so pretty. And you know, I'm leaving hard edges and I'm creating soft edges. That looks awesome. I'm really pleased with how this is coming out. So fun. I gotta do this more often. This just feels good, you know? It's kind of like a, doing a Zen garden or something. It looks nothing like the reference photo, by the way. The reference photo is definitely a stormy cloud, cloudy sky, but... Now here's my favorite white ever. This is Terridge's, it's Diane Townsend. And so if you ever wanna just get a little pop of really crisp white, this is the way to do it. I don't think it's, unfortunately I've got like a dark finger so it's not gonna blend as nicely, but I mean, that just looks really pretty. I'll do another one out over here. And then I'm gonna just blend it. But I am gonna keep a little bit of a hard edge on the white. So I'm getting multiple layers here, which is good. So for people that are worried about, you know, creating landscapes or, you know, pastel pieces on drawing paper, it's definitely doable. It's just not everyone's preference is all. All right, so next I'm actually gonna switch gears and I'm gonna go into a lighter color down below. So I'm gonna just kind of leave, finish off the dark of the clouds. Okay, and then I'm going to go into another color. So it's going into kind of an orangey yellow down here, but that needs to be a little bit of a subtle transition. So I'm gonna transition with mm, this color. It's kind of brownish gray, but it's slightly warmer. So I'm just gonna place it next to this orange and I'm gonna smudge them, but not too, I'm not gonna smudge them too much into each other, okay? Because the reference photo does kind of show that there's a little bit of a line of demarcation between the cool color and the warm color. So I'm gonna adhere to that. And then I'm gonna start having fun with a lighter color. Now this one is very light. So I don't really want it to be that orange, but what I'm going to do is I can smudge it a little bit with this red. This is coming out to be kind of a weird color combination and that's completely my fault, but it doesn't matter. And these can be blended in a little bit. like a straight line, you can blend it really nicely. All right, so down below, it's kind of getting into more of a golden look. So I'm gonna switch gears a little bit and go with this yellow. And let's see. Okay, just so you don't think I'm crazy, this is really how the reference photo looks. 
Okay, hopefully you can see that. So it's very dark here and then it kind of opens up to a really warm color. So bear with me here. We're gonna make this look good somehow because I admit it's not coming out to be something I love, but you know, that's the cool thing about, about art is that you can definitely do a lot of um, experimenting and just having fun. And if it comes out to be chunky, then it was probably a small investment you can throw away. I, you know, am always honest with people. I throw art away all the time. Even, yeah, I mean, even stuff that was hanging on a shelf in this little art store, if it doesn't sell after a little while, I usually throw it away. Um, and part of that is because I've decided I don't like it anymore. I'm going to just... Throwing some terrages, all kind of soft, not this weird line we've got going on. Again, we're just having fun here. I'm just showing you how different um, soft pastels are compared to hard pastels. And which one do I like better? Well, I don't really like. Um, any one better than the other. I would say I probably use, even though I'm having so much fun right now, I probably use hard pastels a little bit more just because I tend to draw in a way that's, you know, makes a little bit more sense for the hard pastels. But this is really fun. And I forgot how much I actually really like using soft pastel. I actually haven't done one for a while because um, most I've been doing a lot of commissions lately and there just has been in hard pastel. So I'm gonna go, kind of go in with the dark cloud here. And I'll just kind of soften this up inside. you can sweep in you know that pastel which is super which looks really cool so you just sweep it in all right so then the final thing we have going on here was again another um, another kind of mountain silhouetted in so you'll notice that it's a little harder to get a very straight line with your um, soft pastels just because they're rounded. So their shape gives you a little bit of a disadvantage. See, I'm really trying to create like a tip, but it's kind of working. Again, if I really wanted to be precise, I could always go in with a hard pastel and then just kind of color it in with a soft pastel if I really wanted a, a hard line. But again, this is just for fun. And I will just... The other thing too is um, with pastels, they have different tools you can buy as well. You can buy things like um, little brushes and little pastel shapers that look like this. If you don't wanna get your hands dirty and you wanna like really get into that tip, you could do something like this. Um, I just prefer to use my finger because I you know, have more control over that. But now I'm going to make these mountains just a little bit misty. And 
and I'll do a nice and I'll just show you how these kind of blend. So that was like a very soft pink. And now we'll do kind of a purple. I'm gonna just add one more little color there and then I'll blend it as like a mist, like a misty purple mountain. So that's my stock pastel kind of abstract landscape, if you will. What I'm going to do next is I'll put them side by side and you can really see the difference in hard pastel versus the soft pastel. of them. I'll try to get them all in the frame. Yeah, here we go. So soft pastel. I'm sorry, hard pastel over here. So there's less really blending. The lines are a little bit more harsh. Um, especially you can see that, you know, pretty well here in the mountains. And you are, however, able to get more you know, detail in the trees, um, but there's not a ton of smudging going on. And if there is, the um, pastel pigment doesn't really travel too far away from where it was originally laid down on the paper. But the soft pastel, however, there's a really huge blending range and you can have a lot more fun, I think, with soft pastels. Um, they are a bit more pricier. Sticks of soft pastels can go like from like five to six dollars a stick, whereas the hard pastel is only about a dollar per stick, maybe two dollars depending on the brand. But I like the soft pastels because there's just a lot more color options to choose from. They're kind of fun, to, more fun to work with. I think there's a lot of blending, and you know you can make things look really smoky and sultry and moody and more abstract, whereas hard pastels. Um, you're going to use those for more detailed work, even things that, you know, might be a little bit more realistic. Um, I do tend to use hard pastels more, even though I really have fun with the soft pastels. Again, I would recommend getting a, um, maybe a small set of both and you can just try them out and see which one you prefer and, you know, what your style tends to be. My style just tends to be a little bit more um, realistic but you know not that realistic for a realistic artist it's on the looser side but you know on the whole spectrum of art I would call myself more on the realism side but anyways um, you know you got to play around with them and decide what works best for you but I really appreciate you watching this video and if you have any questions on any of these products I used or any of the techniques or something you'd like to see me do in the future, um, just let me know and I would be really happy to make a video just for you. Thanks, have a great day, bye-bye.